Hi, welcome back to another Pharmacy Republic and Nebula Health video. Today we're going to be talking about TRT and the effect it can potentially have on your fertility. So that's one of the big considerations to consider when starting TRT therapy is the effect that it can have on your fertility. When we take uh, any form of TRT or testosterone, what we're effectively telling the brain is that we have enough testosterone circulating in our blood, so there's no need for the testes to produce it. So we don't send those essential messages, messages to the testes to produce uh, the testosterone. So before we look at this in detail, it's worthwhile just to go over the basics again, or the basics on how testosterone and sperm are produced in the body. So another video, another diagram. So if we look at this diagram, this upper box represents the brain. This lower box represents the testes. And here, this blue box here represents blood and the testosterone in the blood. Within the brain, we have the hypothalamus. Sitting underneath the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland. In previous uh, videos, we told you that the pituitary gland is situated just about here, hangs off a stalk and is the size of a pea, produces a number of hormones, but the ones that we're going to be focusing on are the FSH and LH, and they are like messenger hormones. They're just like uh, messengers that tell the testes to produce either sperm or testosterone. Okay, uh, and this lower box, we've divided it into Sertoli cells, which receive messages from the FSH, and Leydig cells, which receive messages from the LH. Okay, so we have, this is the blood, and within the blood we have circulating testosterone. Okay, so the hypothalamus, the higher brain center, constantly monitors the blood for uh, hormone levels. So it monitors the level of testosterone in the blood. When this gets too low, the hypothalamus sends a signal to the pituitary gland via gonadotropin releasing hormone. The pituitary gland receives a signal from the hypothalamus telling it that the testosterone levels are low. We need to produce production. We need to increase production. Pituitary gland then sends the messengers FSH and LH to the testes here. FSH goes to the Sertoli cells to produce sperm in a process known as spermatogenesis. Luteinizing hormone or LH is released from the pituitary gland and sent to the Leydig cells in the testes to produce testosterone. We call this testosterone that is produced inside the testes intratesticular testosterone bit of a tongue twister. Now, it's very important that testosterone is produced locally in the testes, in this box if you want. Uh, it's important that we produce that intratesticular testosterone because it's needed for the production of sperm. It's needed to have a positive local effect on our sperm and on spermatogenesis. So this is where our fertility can be affected. If we do not have this local intratesticular testosterone, it cannot impact positively on our fertility. If it, its absence will severely affect our spermatogenesis and our fertility. Now, when we produce, the Leydig cells produce the intratesticular testosterone, it diffuses out of the testes, and goes back into circulation. The level increases, which then sends a negative feedback message at two levels. It sends a message to the higher hypothalamus, hypoth hypothalamic level, and a negative feedback message to the slightly lower pituitary gland. So you get two negative feedback messages, and basically they're telling the brain, we have enough testosterone, cut the messengers off, LH and FSH. And so the message to produce testosterone is stopped and the testosterone levels return to normal. And again, it's 
An important concept uh, for all hormones is this negative feedback mechanism. Because imagine if this message from LH just kept going and going and going and going, we don't look like the Incredible Hulk with you know testosterone levels in the billions. So when we reach a certain level, we get that negative feedback kicking in and again it's turned off. Okay. So we've talked about the importance of local testosterone production because it impacts on the sperm. Now, when you introduce testosterone uh, in the form of exogenous testosterone, remember when we talk about something that's exogenous, is something that's outside of the body and introduced into the body. So we inject testosterone, for example. Testosterone goes into the bloodstream, okay? Now, it will send two negative feedback messages, one to the hypothalamus, one to the pituitary gland. We cut the messengers, the messengers that are sent to the testes. So the testes does not produce this intratesticular testosterone. Remember what we said earlier. We need this intratesticular testosterone to impact the spermatogenesis. Okay. So by reduce by introducing TRT, we turn off the local intratesticular testosterone. And that is what can affect our sperm. Now you may be wondering, uh, but hang about, I'm introducing testosterone in the blood. Yeah, why can't it come here? And there's a reason I drew a box around the brain and around the blood, uh, the testes. Because both are very delicate structures and they need to be protected from harmful substances in the blood. So we have a blood brain barrier and we have a testes blood barrier okay so one of the reasons why we have these barriers is that we have in our blood we have circulating antibodies so if these antibodies could come into contact with the sperm they could potentially destroy them again not very good for your fertility so we have this barrier here which stops this high level of testosterone becoming intratesticular testosterone that's the reason why we get this potential decrease in fertility it's because we've turned off local production and the testosterone that we introduce in the blood cannot make its way to the testes because of this barrier. Okay? So does that mean that if you want to start uh, TRT, you have to sacrifice your, uh, your fertility? Not necessary. Not ne that's not strictly the case. If you go to an experienced practitioner, they are, have enough knowledge about this pathway where they can manipulate it to encourage your own local production of testosterone. So let's go back. So how can we increase our testosterone levels? What hormone was responsible? It was the luteinizing hormone. So if we can mimic the actions of luteinizing hormone, we can create intratesticular testosterone of sufficient levels to you know, have a positive impact on our fertility. Now, there is a very, very similar hormone uh, to luteinizing hormone. It's called HCG. You may have heard of it. HCG is produced in abundance uh, by pregnant women because it sustains and maintains their pregnancy. So we know the genetic code for HCG. So what we've done, what this, uh, the manufacturers of Ovitrol have done, they've got the code for the genetic code for HCG and they've plug that into bacteria and produce the protein. This is called recombinant DNA. So recombinant DNA technology, if you have the genetic code, you can plug it into bacteria who are like mini factories and they produce a pure protein. So we use Ovitrol, which is made by recombinant DNA. And when we inject it, it replaces LH and stimulates the production of intratesticular testosterone, which positively impacts our fertility. Uh, remember I said HCG is produced by pregnant women. Another way to get HCG is to purify the urine of pregnant women. And a number of products are on the market uh, that use uh, pregnant women's urine are Ganassi and Pregnant. 
obviously it's purified or I hope it's purified and it does essentially the same job as the arbitral. It mimics the LH, sends a message to the testes to produce into a testicular testosterone. There is another way that we can trick the body into producing testosterone. If we act higher up and if we take a tablet called clomiphene or clomid, which is a serm, a serm, not a SARM, a serm stands for selective estrogen receptor modulator. It blocks estrogen receptors at this higher level at the hypothalamus. Now the hypothalamus knows that your estrogen has come from testosterone. So if it cannot detect estrogen, it assumes that your testosterone levels are low. So therefore it thinks, oh my gosh, no estrogen, therefore no testosterone, let me boost production of testosterone to increase production of estrogen. We've explained in another video how testosterone uh, produces estrogen and DHT. So the brain thinks there's no estrogen, so it needs to increase production of testosterone. So it sends the same signal, GNR, G, uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone, which then instructs the pituitary to release FSH and LH. With the case of clomid, it's more so FSH, but LH is also uh, released and they go act on the testes to increase spermatogenesis and increase the local production of intratesticular testosterone. So these two uh, solutions to fertility uh, with, with regards to HRT, HCG, uh, can be used in isolation to increase your own levels of testosterone if they're deficient. And they can be used in conjunction with things like sustenone or testosterone enanthate, which will turn off your own local production, and they can preserve your fertility, as will the clomid when taken in combination. Or if you want to maintain the testicular architecture and the size, you can take the ovitrol as well. So I hope this has gone some way to explain why TRT can affect your fertility and how it's not, not necessarily uh, a, a absolute uh, contraindication, it's a relative contraindication, which means that we can work around it and we can work, we can manipulate this pathway to actually preserve the fertility. So if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, that's if I haven't confused you too much. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to us and uh, uh, follow us on Facebook. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.